What's up YouTube fragrance family? Tommy with Studio Sense here with another video review of something new and something old. Way back in 2011, Jean-Paul Gaultier released a fragrance that is not really discussed very much, so we're going to take a look at that fragrance, which is called Coco Rico, and also a new fragrance release that was released just this year, 2021, by Juliet Has a Gun called Pear Ink. Now these are two very distinctively different fragrances. We're going to talk about what makes them different and what makes them maybe something you might want to pick up, that and more, so stay tuned. Welcome back everyone. So today we're talking about two very different fragrances. The very first one we're going to take a look at is from the House of Juliet Has a Gun. A 2021 release and let's take a closer look at that presentation. about the fragrances we're talking about today. They're very simplistic, not only in the note breakdown, but also in presentation. On the simple outer label, you've got Juliet has a gun, pear ink is in red, it's an eau de parfum concentration, 100 ml bottle. On the very side, you've got the batch code, which is 390B, as in boy, 20011, for those interested. On the back, they're kind enough to put a description of what the fragrance is representing. Pear ink is a fragrance built around a green pear laying on a milky heart of musk and a twist of ambroxan to lift the gourmand side up. A heavenly fragrance evoking happiness, sunny days, and positivity. And I kind of like that message. Then it gives a brief description of Juliet as a house and gives you a little bit of uh, in-depth knowledge about them. This is just a foam cover. You open it up, the bottle's inside. Unlike the plastic ones, these are very easy to pull the bottle out. I think this was a missed opportunity. They could have made something that actually was shaped like a pear. That would have been cool with the atomizer on the top being where the stem is, but this supposedly is representative of a pear in shape. The presentation is really nice. The bottle is very heavy. It's very thick on the bottom. That gradient is a really pretty look. The stopper is silver. Looks really nice, comes off very easily. Um, it's pressure and weighted, so it doesn't click into place and it's not magnetic. But what about the note breakdown of Pear Ink? Let's talk a little bit about the simplistic note breakdown. Pear Ink by Juliet Has a Gun features a top note of green pear with a heart note of ambroxan, resting on musk, ambretolide, habanolide, and muscanone got pear in the open, you've got some ambroxan in the heart, and then you have three kinds of synthetic musk. There's ambretolide, hanolide, and muscanone. Not going to go into detail about what those synthetic musks smell like because they are representing the kind of allure. It binds everything together and that's primarily what you're getting is a fruity, musky fragrance, which is an unusual combination. Hopefully they can carry it off. That's the question that I ask myself primarily about pear ink. Is it going to be super fruity and musky? like we want it to be, or is it gonna be synthetic musk, synthetic fruit? Let's find out, let's test out that juice. It's also worth noting that pear ink is a unisex fragrance, though admittedly unisex typically leans one side or the other. Let's see if it leans masculine or feminine. So this is a very quality atomizer. You can, it's one of those metered atomizers where you can spray just a little or you can spray a lot. It's pleasant. So the top note is a very lightly sweet, very lightly sweet pear. There were just a few reviews of pear ink on Sephora. The very first person said, I liked the fragrance, but I was disappointed because it didn't last at all. Just three hours and it was gone. The second person said, I love this fragrance. It lasts all day. So again, opinions abound. Is it going to last though? Or is it going to go away? Can't really tell with the tester strip. So let's let's test it out. At this point, I am going to say this is leaning more feminine than it is masculine. 
Okay, on skin, it's definitely more pleasant. And Broxen is actuated, as are the musks. To even appreciate what musks and what Ambroxen can do, you've got to have a little bit of heat behind them. Sometimes a lot of heat behind them, at least body temperature. As an eau de parfum, I'm going to foresee that this is going to sit closer to the skin. It's not going to project a ton. It is a relatively demure or diminutive or quiet fragrance. Pear is not a bomb of a smell anyway when it comes to fragrance. Apple's even stronger than pear. Citruses are usually stronger than pear. Pear is an unusual scent. It is more, it's more in line with musks. So it's good that they've paired pear, paired pear with musks in here, but it doesn't make it a banger of a fragrance. It's good that they've used Ambroxan. It definitely needs something to push it forward, to promote it, uh, to get behind it, and to be a, you know, a volume adder. The projection is gonna be okay on this. I feel like the longevity is gonna be eh. That's going to be the challenge of this fragrance for those of you out there that are just big on longevity. I'm going to guesstimate the longevity at right around four hours, four to five hours. Pear isn't a necessarily masculine or feminine trait or smell or fragrant note. I think it is tilting more on the feminine side, however, and I think it's going to stay on the feminine side. Um, it's enjoyable. I do like it. I don't think it's worth the 135 bucks that it was when it first came out. Thankfully, it has hit discounters. Um, right now you can get this at Fragrance X for I believe right around 70 bucks or so. At around 40 bucks, I'd say it's gonna be worth it. I wouldn't necessarily pay more than that for it. This fragrance doesn't smell like something you would sit down and smell on a guy in a board meeting. It just doesn't smell upscale. Now, while it does smell a little bit refined and reserved, it's more on the casual side. And again, more on the feminine casual side. Juliet has a gun, pear ink. Well, that was our new. Next up, we have Old. It's a 2011 fragrance that I didn't know anything about just because I hadn't heard anything about it, saw any reviews for it. It's not really discussed very often in the fragrance community. It is a Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrance. Kind of unusual looking, and the name is unusual. literally unseal it and this pops off. Of course, I had to pop this off camera because I had to hold it with two hands or I would literally drop it. Apply a little bit of pressure, it pops off. You've got a padded top and a padded grotto in here that is cut out of foam. Sits in the foam just like that. And then the bottle is an interesting, it's like a face shape, their profile, their outline, and it is called Coco Rico. Now this is a 1.6 ounce eau de toilette 50 ml bottle of Coco Rico. Coco Rico is described as a woody gourmand fragrance. Let's talk a little bit about that note breakdown. Coco Rico by Jean Paul Gaultier features a top note of fig leaf with heart notes of cocoa and patchouli, resting on a base of vetiver and cedar wood. So you've got fig leaf in the top, in the heart. You've got a combination of cocoa and patchouli, and then in the base, vetiver and cedar wood. So nothing unusual, however, about the formula, but it's gonna be interesting how they you know, mix how much of this and how much of that for it to be a woody gourmand fragrance. Two of my favorite industry noses or perfumers, Anique Minardo and Olivier Cresp, came together to create Coco Rico. Nice, whoa. That atomizer is bomb. It, it really sprays a very wide kind of array and it sprays it way out there. This is some strong stuff. Typical Jean-Paul Gaultier though. It is kind of a sexy smell. I don't even have to smell the tester strip. It's like in the air. Very woody spicy though. I like that. So for you chocolate lovers out there, you'll be really happy to know this is a chocolate oriented or 
cocoa or if you want to say cacao. What is the difference between cocoa and cacao? Like when you saw my ingredients listing there and you saw the beans in the pod, that's cacao. The beans after they're processed then become cocoa. It's kind of the same thing, but it's just the, the difference in the naming convention is in the process basically. But this definitely has that kind of a roasted chocolate, but it's creamy as well. It's kind of lightly milky creamy, but darker and richer and spicy. So it's kind of a good combination of all of those. I don't know that I'm getting the fig leaf. I think maybe just a bit. It adds a little bit of zing or a little bit of zest to the open there, just like citrus does to a soapy fragrance. Fig is adding the zing or zest to this. Kind of a nice olfactive contrast. So you have something a little bit brighter to hang on to while this kind of combination, woody, rich, deeper, darker, with a little bit of sunshine or green in the open. In the base, I'm getting that vetiver and cedar wood. In the base, it's becoming a little more dry, a little more elegant, which is interesting for chocolate. Chocolate you don't normally think of as elegant. It's gonna be a very typically casual smell, fragrance. With a little bit of heat on my skin, it's taking on the constituents of somewhat of a barber shop. It's interesting, it's very different. It's nice, it's masculine, but once you get past the open with that contrast between the cocoa and the fig, I guess it's the combination of the cocoa and the vetiver and maybe some of the woody, you know, the cedar there, it smells a little bit sour, like it's not a pleasant smell. It's about maybe the last 20% of the smell. So 80% of it I really like in the open, in the heart, with that dry down, it's a little bit too sour and it, it could be my chemical composition. The sourness has gone away. I think it was the, the smell of the sour, I think it was just drying off, but it's not really there anymore. Now it's a shame though, because I really like how this smells outside of being on my skin on a tester strip. It's just really very woody gourmand is a great way to describe it. But on my skin, it's almost funky. It's just an okay fragrance. It's not something that's super impressive and not something maybe that will turn heads. It's just an interesting and unique fragrance. I kind of get why not a ton of people are talking about it. It is different though. I will give it that. In an industry where there's clones of everything being made or too many smell-alikes, this is definitely very different. I don't think there's anything else out there that smells quite like Coco Rico. And it's interesting, the idea behind Coco Rico, if you've ever heard the term onomatopoeia, it's like a sound represented by a word. When we hear a rooster crow, Coco Rico, where ours is, or however you want to spell that out, Coco Rico is the French equivalent to a rooster crow. Or, apparently, a young man in the throes of passion. The boastful cry of a rooster, the conquering cry of a man warrior, the cry of a young man filled with pleasure. <laughs> Well, I do get that the fig is refreshing. It provides some form of raw energy and power to the fragrance. It's just not enough for me to like it in that dry down. It's the dry down is a little bit too chocolatey, woody, sour on my skin. I just don't care for that combination. So Coco Rico, well, I'm glad that I've got it and I will use it on some rare occasions. I can't think of a ton of occasions that you would even want to use this, maybe during the holidays, you know? Jean-Paul Gaultier's Coco Rico. We've got Pear Ink by Juliet Has a Gun, which is a nice pear-oriented fragrance that tilts a little bit on the feminine side and maybe have a challenge of longevity there, but is a good pear fragrance if you're looking for pear. And also Coco Rico by Jean-Paul Gaultier. While it's an interesting kind of chocolate, woody, gourmand-like fragrance, in the end it has just a bit of sourness that, while it's a little bit more on the barbershop side, is something that doesn't smell good on my skin anyway. Definitely test it out, or if you know someone that has it, spray it on your skin first before you go all in on a bottle. Well, that puts a wrap on today's video. Thanks so much for stopping by and checking out my unboxing and first impression of these two cool fragrances. And as always, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense, and I'll see you tomorrow.